What's up, y'all? We are back with John Joffrey Builds Construction Terms. Today, we're talking plumbing. So I thought I would get the master himself, literally my master plumber and my only plumber. We've actually been together since our very first project together in Austin. That was about seven years ago, and this guy is so good, I have not left him. So we're gonna have Angel with Rod Plumbing help give us all the details we need so that you will be a plumbing pro after this video. Okay, so first, I always look at plumbing with three different stages. One is plumbing rough, then we have plumbing top out, and then we finally have our trim out. So first, what's plumbing rough? Plumbing rough is all the plumbing that's underneath the subfloor, underneath the pier and beam, or underneath the slab before it comes up and where the walls are gonna be. So really anything that is under a slab or under a subfloor is plumbing rough. We're covered up right here, so you can't see the rough below us. Stage two, one of my favorite stages, plumbing top out. Plumbing top out is when we're above the subfloor. This is where we run our water lines down the wall. This is where we have our vents going up in the wall and also our gas system will eventually come down the wall and we put everything in the walls. That's our plumbing top out. We go from the top of the slab out of the roof. Is that a good way of looking at it? Yeah, that is correct. Especially your vent system. It needs to go out of the roof at least minimum 12 inches past the roof. Plumbing vents, extremely important. So anytime there's a drain, there has to be a vent, correct? That is correct. So tell drain. us about venting and plumbing in general. So venting after your stub out, after your drain stub out comes out of the wall, that's your vent system starts. And uh, it is required to have a stack vent that's gonna be 45 degrees at an angle or higher for it to be a proper vent. So I always think of venting just like Mario. I mean, it all just has to connect, but are there restraints on like how many turns that you can make in a vent and like what distance those can be? Well, yes, there, there are some codes on it. You definitely have to uh, make sure you use the correct fittings to connect your vents. Make sure you're above your flood level areas on all your fixtures to then combine your vents together. Um, same thing like we talk about vertical, horizontal. We gotta know when to go horizontal, when to go vertical. So there's a lot of plumbing codes that we have to follow in regards to venting. Yeah. Okay, so this is a standard lav or a sink, and this is the stub out for it. Right. You just spoke about flood level. Tell us flood level and show us how the vent works in this situation. So your flood level is basically when the top of your sink. You mm -hmm. know, usually they're about 36 inches um, from the floor to the top of the sink, and that's when it overflows. You know what I mean? Your, your, your sink is gonna overflow. We have to be at least six inches above the flood level rim before we could go horizontal once we come up on a vent. Perfect. So that, that allows us to combine vents together and then go up. Above so that flood above level. Now what happens level. if you screw up and you had a vent below flood level, they would catch it in an inspection, but why wouldn't that work? Correct, yeah, because it's if in case of a backup, you know, you got your flood level rim where it's gonna back up, but if you're under that, it allows solids or whatever blockage to get into that horizontal part. Mm -hmm. So if you're not vertical there and you clear the drain, then those those remain in that horizontal part. Right. And that's why it's, it's really important to keep your horizontals and verticals where you need to, you know? Yeah. So as long as you are above flood level, at least six inches, then no, no solids will ever get in your horizontal pipes for a vent line. That is correct, yeah. Okay, now, Let's just talk about drain lines in general. Can a vent and a drain be together? Uh, technically, you have to separate them. Like for example, this is the drain part to the stove out. If we wanted to add another drain, we would have to add a Y down here and then go and catch that drain by itself. And then once it becomes a vent, then we could combine them together. But again, we have to be six yes. inches above the floor. So you can never combine a drain and a vent. The vent always has to be separate from the drain above it. That is correct. That Perfect. is correct. Now, we're looking at this lab. Just tell me the different parts we have. What, are, what is this? We have these two spaghetti looking lines here and then something <laughs> down here. Yes, so this right here is gonna be your clean out. There's gonna be, this is gonna trim down, cut down, and then we're gonna put a clean out cap here. This allows us to bring our sewer machine just in case it ever backs up. We're able to feed our cable in there and clear the drain. Perfect. And then this right here is your stove out. This is where you're gonna have a P-trap and then connect to your drain for your sink. Right here is your cold water line and your hot water line. And of course, these are gonna be the, the hot and cold for your faucet to allow you to wash your hands or whatever you gotta do here. Hot is always on the left, cold is always on the right. That is correct. Now, why are we coming up with this P-trap or this drain line so high. Yeah, so this allows us to put a test tee 
down underneath the drain and allows us to put water into the system to so the inspector could come in here and see that it's holding water. That is part of our top out inspection. The inspector's gonna wanna see that this is holding water and there's no leaks down underneath the drain system. That is part of our top out inspection. Okay, Angel just brought up test. Let's go over and look at some test tees. And I want Angel to explain more about what putting a whole system on test is. All right, so we have a drain line here. Tell us what we're looking at. What size is this? And what is this right here? This is a three inch drain stack that goes up into the next floor up. This is our test tee right here. This allows us to put a test ball in there. What is a test ball? A test ball is basically like a balloon. You put air on it and it blocks the, the water from going down the drain. And that allows us to put water in this, fill it up with water, and for the inspector to go up there and see that there is water level holding on this system right here. And that is also a part of a plumbing top out. Perfect, so basically any time that we have a plumbing system, we need to make sure it's watertight, right? We don't want any of this drainage leaking anywhere in the house. So we put our test ball in, we fill everything up with water, and the inspector can simply look in, see that the water level's there, and know that we're watertight. Okay, we just looked at a standard drain inside of a wall, but this is our kitchen island. So tell me why this looks different. Yeah, this looks different because it's an actual island. So venting purposes, we have to do a loop vent. The loop vent allows us to run the vent horizontal underneath the subfloor and then come up in the wall and then go vertical. This is the only place that they allow us to do plumbing like this, only on an island. So normally in the wall, you would just vent straight up. Correct. But you have to put this loop. Why, does that help with circulation of the airflow for the vent? That is correct. It helps the drain system vent out and allows it to drain properly. If we don't have a vent for it, it's not gonna drain properly. Perfect, so just like on the lavatory, we have our P-trap that we're gonna fill this up with That's water. What are these two right here? So these are clean outs. These clean outs allow you to clean the drain system if it gets clogged up. One of them is put on your vent system and one of, them is, one of them is put on your drain system. So you could clear both of them out if something happens or it backs up, you need to clean both of them out. And this looks kind of goofy right now because we're in top out, but tell me, will you be cutting these back and putting caps or like how will this look for final? Yeah, basically we're gonna cut down on the clean outs and we're gonna put proper caps on this. Uh, we're gonna definitely remove this. This is just put in for testing. So again, so the inspector can see that it's holding water and there's no leaks and it's maintaining water there. And this will be our P-trap. So this is all gonna get cleaned up. And of course, we'll have our coal and our hot water line in there. Perfect. So. Okay, we mentioned P-trap. I am physically holding one. Why do they call it a P-trap? How does it work? Where do you install it? So this is a P-trap. It goes on every fixture. The reason why we need it in every fixture is for your sewer gases. And that basically creates a bad smell that comes up. And this allows us to hold water on the P-trap. The water basically blocks the gases to come back into your fixture and stop those nasty smells from sewer. Mm. So that is mainly the purpose for having a P-trap in place. So yeah. basically this is gonna go, you're gonna cut this down and yeah. then this P-trap is gonna go right here with the drain up to the sink. That is correct, yes. Perfect. All right, let's talk about PVC and PEX. First, Angel, what is PVC? What do we use it for? And why is it best used? So PVC, we definitely use it for our sewer system, but it also can be used for your water system. You know what I mean? Uh, it's definitely better to use it for your sewer system as it's durable for that. And we could give it fall, we could give it a good slope on it. And it's pretty sturdy and holds yeah. it Yeah. So back in the day, they used to use cast iron. Why do we use PVC versus cast iron now? Well, cast iron, usually it's, it's iron. Once the water goes through it, it eats the iron away. It slowly eats it up, rusts it out, and it becomes where it just starts cracking, falling apart, creates leaks. And then PVC is gonna last your longest since it doesn't do that. It doesn't rust out like cast iron does. Perfect, how long does PVC last, you know? Uh, PVC should last you about 80 years yeah. plus, you know, especially if you put it back to, together really good, it should last pretty much forever, yeah. PEX. PEX. Tell us what these spaghetti noodle looking things are and what do we use them for? So this is PEX. We use it for our water system. You know, this allows us to run it real fast through our top outs. Uh, it is not copper, so it's a lot more flexible. We can run it through our trusses and it just makes the job a lot easier. Uh, this is a type A type of PEX. This allows the more expansion and contraction, you know? So definitely on a freeze, it allows it to expand. Yes. A lot. 
so it doesn't burst, it doesn't pop. You know right, what I mean? so we want some expansion and contraction. We definitely want that. We want the maximum on that so it could, you know, give you those, that freeze protection when it gets really cold. Okay, we see these like this, but I wanna talk about why we wrap some of the pecs in this black insulated material. Yeah, let's so, go over there and check it out. Yeah, let's check it out. Okay, so here's a good example of what Angel was talking about, how we can snake this pex all through our framing. But I see some pex here that's uncovered and then some that's wrapped in this rubber sleeve. What is this? So this is the insulation for the hot water system. This allows the water to maintain hot and is also like an energy efficient for your water heater. So it doesn't have to recover as often. Okay, first let's talk about penetrations. Regarding plumbing, what is a penetration? A penetration is basically when we drill and we go like, for example, through the roof or even the stove out to a penetration. Right, or out. penetrating through a stud. Or penetrating through a stud. So yes. anytime we have a penetration, there's this metal piece here, also in our top plate. What are these for and what are they called? So this is a single stud shoe. It's single because it's only one stud right here. They make doubles when it's a double stud shoe. And this basically protects the pipe and it also gives the support on the framing since we had to drill a big hole through it. Awesome. Yeah. So, and like here in our top plate, we put these nail plates so that when we're drywalling or when we're coming back and we're putting in sort of cladding, we don't come through and hit this pipe with a screw, That's right? That's correct, yep. Okay, so above us, we have our PVC drain lines and they're hanging by these metal perforated strips. Yes. Kind of reminds me of like an old school erector set for like trains. What are those? That's called strap iron. We use strap iron to help us support our plumbing, you know, up. So it maintains it where it keeps it where we, we have our constant fall and it just helps us support our plumbing system where we need it. Like it's all floating, so we need it for that. Okay, perfect. And you mentioned fall. What is fall? Why do we need it? What's the formula for fall? So fall, we, we basically, our sewer system works off of gravity, basically. So we need fall for the water to drain down, the solids to go down, and we need at least a quarter inch per foot on fall on the pipe going horizontal. So that allows the drain to flow correctly. So let's talk more about drain lines. To me, this is all fun. Just like a kid kind of connecting pipes. <laughs> I have fun with it. These guys actually do it for work and for a purpose. So I want to talk about these different parts. First off, what I would call this is an elbow. That is correct. That's a long sweep 90 right there. A long sweep 90. Okay, here is a T. You see there's a vertical plane on the bottom and a horizontal piece at the top. Why would you use a T and a, when? A T, you use it on your stove outs, on your trap arms. That's where you need the T. So this T allows us to do our trap arm before we go to our P trap. Perfect. And basically being this open right here allows the airflow to go through. So that's why we use it on stove outs. Okay, this is a Y. It's called a Y because it looks like a Y. Now, why would we use a Y? <laughs> We'll use a Y to branch off for a drain. Like if we want another drain, a two inch drain, we use it for that. So basically Perfect. we just add it to the system to get another drain. Yeah. Okay, awesome. Okay, now why we like to use PVC is it's very easy to cut. It's also very easy to meld together. Now tell me, how does PVC work together? So PVC, you put it together with primer first and then you put glue and then we put them together. It's a solvent joint. So it basically melts the pieces together. And we don't call it a glue joint because it's not just glue, it's, it's a solvent. It yeah. melts it together. So it's together. melted together. Yes. Once you use the glue or the solvent, this is done. If you need to redo this, you have to cut each side out, correct? That is correct, yeah. Well, which is also awesome because once it's all glued and solvented together, then this is watertight. You know that these pieces are melted together and this is not gonna fail if you glued it correctly. That's correct. Okay, let's talk adjustable drains. So what I'm holding is a piece of an adjustable drain. This works just like our shower drains, but we're out here on a porch, same application. Tell me what is this piece, this piece, and how does it work? So that's your flange right there. The flange is there so they can waterproof it. They waterproof it to the flange. And then this is your body of the drain. So this is adjustable. This allows you to screw it down all the way down here so you can adjust it to whatever level, whatever height you want. So this could go up to like from one to three inches high. Depends on how high you build it up. Awesome. Yep. Above us, we have a bunch of pecs crisscrossing. They're connected together. What's going on here? So right here, we got our 
recirculating system that has a loop on it and our hot water system has a loop that goes all around the house and basically we drop our lines straight down to our fixtures. That allows us to get the hot water there faster with that pump and recirculating loop. So hot water is recirculating around the house at all times so that we don't have to pull hot water all the way from our hot water to this location. We have it recirculating above us and it'll drop right down so you get hot water in a matter of seconds. Yep. All right, we're inside the shower. Let's talk about the valve. What are we looking at here? So this valve right here, you got your hot and your cold going into it. This controls the on and off. And it, we also have a diverter that transfers the water to your handheld and also your rain head right here. So we have a rain head for the shower head. We have a handheld and then we have all the controls. The valves are built into the wall. All right, so I wanted to talk just about a regular toilet with a drain in the floor. This is a very high-end job. Every single toilet we have is a wall-hung toilet. So tell me about this system and how the install is different from a regular toilet. So this is a wall-hung toilet, so that means the plumbing, the drain system comes in the wall. So what's gonna happen here, we got this frame that, that the wood is gonna get to it. We're gonna bolt it down to the framing so it doesn't move. And basically the toilet bowl gets attached to this frame that looks like it's floating at the end. It's floating from the wall. Yes, so you have no part of the toilet that's gonna be touching the ground. All of the drain lines are inside the wall. How cool is that? Okay, we've gone over sinks, we've gone over island loops, we've gone over wall-mounted toilets. Now, let's talk about tubs. There's a couple different types of tubs, which is just a drop-in tub, but this is a freestanding tub. What do we got going on here? This is a freestanding tub. This is your drain where it comes up, so it could be kind of like an island tub, and this is your floor-mounted tub filler. This tub filler will come from the floor and it feeds the tub. Basically. So just like a shower, there's a valve for the floor mounted tub filler. We also could do a wall mounted tub filler and some of them integrate in the tub. This one's just a floor mounted filler. Okay, Angel, we're in the kitchen. What do we have here? This is your ice maker box. This is what feeds the water to your refrigerator. So it's on a recess box and we could put it in the wall and give it a nice look at the end. Why do we have to insulate this if it's only cold? This is on an exterior wall. So if it's on an exterior wall, we gotta insulate either hot and, both hot and cold. Awesome. Okay, we're actually in the middle of installing our washer box at a different location. But Angel, tell us about how, a washer box and how it works. So this is your washer box. Again, similar to your ice maker box. It goes in the wall, so it could be recessed in the wall. Give it a nice look. And of course, you got your hot and your cold water lines to connect directly to your washer. And from here, you got your drain connection. That's gonna go into a P-trap and then into your drain system. So the main difference from an ice maker line, which is just a water line, is when you have a washer box, or if you have an ice maker, like an ice machine that needs a drain, you'll need to plumb for the drain as well. That's correct. All right, we've talked about plumbing rough. We've talked about plumbing top out. We've gone over a ton of different terms and plumbing components. The final phase of plumbing is the trim out phase where we put all the pretty things like faucets, handles, trims, knobs, all the beautiful things you see. Now, I do wanna say thank you to Rod Plumbing. Love you guys. These guys bust their ass for me day in and day out. We're more like family than colleagues. We got a ton of different jobs going on. Appreciate you guys. On to the next one. Thank you.